WhatsApp, på Lørdag Flyt, Coming at Year. So, if you one of those people and you're wondering whether there's demons in your life or whether you're wondering how to get rid of demons in your life and there's, you don't know who you can trust to cast out these demons or how you can get rid of them or whether in fact you have any demons in your life or whether you're one of those that are, you know, being tormented um, and you don't know who to cry out to, to deliver you. I'm going to remind you of one thing in the Bible. And that is, there were some that used to cast out demons in the New Testament. They were doing it fictionally. They were doing it, they were saying, we cast you out by Jesus whom Paul preaches. They had no personal relationship with Christ. Christ was not truly their savior. They were saying, we cast you out by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And this, the one time they were trying to cast out a demon and the demon said, you know, Paul, I know, Peter, I know, Jesus, I know, but you, I don't know. The demon was speaking through this person and the person, you know, attacked uh, and beat these um, individuals up that were trying to cast, cast it out. There was also another time where now Jesus gave, you know, um, his disciples authority to cast out demons. This is before Jesus died on the cross. And James and uh, John and Peter were casting out demons. But there was one time they couldn't cast out demons. And so the individual came to Jesus and Jesus cast the demon out. And uh, his disciples said to Jesus, you know, how come we were not able to cast that demon out, but you were. And Jesus said, this kind only comes out by prayer. Now, if the strongest of demons comes out by prayer, because remember, James, and or I think it was James or, or, or Peter, um, I'm not sure who it was, but they couldn't cast this demon out, even though they had cast other demons out by the name of Christ. But this particular one, they could not. Jesus had to cast it out. Jesus told them this prayer, this kind would only come out by prayer, meaning they would need to keep praying for this individual through a long process, maybe days, months, weeks, who knows, and then the demon would be driven out. Prayer would drive this demon out. And so I'm, I'm appealing to any of you who don't know whether or who to trust because let me tell you, if you go to somebody that doesn't really know Jesus and they ca try to attempt to cast these demons out from you, you know what happens? Jesus said, the spirit will leave. It will, dry, it will dwell in dry places, but then eventually he will come back with seven spirits worse than him. And then will re-enter and you'll be worse off than you were at the beginning. So you got to, you know... <laughs> you got to know that that person truly knows God and that they truly have the Spirit of Christ in them. And sometimes that's not possible to know because you don't know what dwells in people's hearts. You know, but now Jesus has died on the cross. He has made a way, he has made a way open that you can access the Father directly. And so if the strongest of demons can come out by prayer, so can the weakest. And so that's my, you know, suggestion to you is to get on your knees and to pray to God and to in, in the name of Christ and to ask God to pour the blood of his son out upon your life to give you of his holy spirit to protect you that God sends his holy angels to protect you that he sends his holy spirit to protect you that he keeps you safe in his hand and that he gives you understanding that he gives you wisdom and ask God to drive them, if there is any demons in your life, ask him to cast them out. And then, most importantly, brothers and sisters, it's no use praying for deliverance of those things, but then you go and live out in the world, in the ways of the world, and then you reopen those ways for them to re-enter, or to, to, you know, you inviting them into your life by things that you do, by the movies you watch, by the music you listen to, by lusting, by committing fornication, by committing adultery, 
by calling for grace, but you're living like a devil. The, the, that's when demons will have their way to come into you. Know that the things that you eat, if you're eating unclean food, you know that even the New Testament, in the New Testament, um, a law was given to the worst of worst pagans, to real heathens, you know, that used to live like barbarians. The law was that they shall not eat, they should not eat animals that have been strangled, animals that have been sacrificed to idols, and animals that have the blood in them still. How many of you eat raw meat that still has blood in it? Now that's a New Testament commandment. And, you know, okay, if you're truly in Christ, because today we get our meat we don't know where it comes from, even of the clean animals. Those animals could have been sacrificed to animals, but if you truly have the blood of Christ in you, that won't do anything because you're covered by the blood of Christ, because you're doing it in ignorance. Paul, the Apostle Paul, even spoke about this in the New Testament. But if you know it's been sacrificed to animals, do not eat thereof. But many of many people that want to eat raw meat, they want to eat dirty animals. They can, that's a way for demons to come into your life. The music you listen to, there's subliminal messages in there. I keep harping on about, go and research the Boulderberg group. How many of you Christians know about the Boulderberg group? It's part of the Illuminati. They run the world. Those are the guys who get to say what you listen to, the music you listen to. And there's subliminal messages in there. Listen to the words. Listen to the satanic words that these singers sing, that, that people listen to daily. Switch off the radio. Stop listening to all the music. Switch off the TV. Stop watching stupid movies. You cannot pray in the morning and ask God for His protection and deliverance and then you go and sit at night and you watch a horror movie to entertain yourself. Stop listening to to preachers that are itch tickling your itching ears. When you read the Bible, what do you do? Do you turn the, and, and, the, and the Word of God corrects you and you don't agree with a particular verse, what do you do? Do you just block it out, turn the page and turn the page and turn the page until you find something that, ap that appeals to you? You know, God resists the pride, the Bible says, but He gives grace unto the humble. He says, you know, uh, it's, I think it's in James 4, that draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. In other words, you draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So it's no use praying like, a, like a, I suggested. But then you're going out and you're opening the portal for demons to come into your life. God is not mocked. What a man sows, that shall he reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap. Of the flesh, you will reap. Corruption. And so, you know, and if, you, if you've got any questions for me, you know, drop them up in the comments below and uh, I will, you know, I'll answer them as long as it's genuine. If you, you know, want to insult God, you want to insult the Bible, you want to criticize, I'm just going to block you off the channel. I don't have time for, you know, the God, Christ said, don't call, cast your pearls before swine. Um, Christ never ever, you know, um, bothered with me. And shall not live by bread. You know, I hope I'll even make mention of you in my prayers, but at the end of the day, it's the prayers or anyone else's prayers, you know, you can get the whole world of Christians to pray for you. That's the problem. Unless it's from the mouth. can make a decision, absolutely. But at the end of the day, when you're getting your face to the ground, when you're seeking deliverance, and then sins off out of your life. Jesus told the woman that was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. If you want to get clean spiritually, if you want to be free in Christ and free of these things, then you just need to be obedient to God. Because are you obedient to God when you pray to Him, you're asking Him for help, but then you go and you entertain your wicked mind with the things of the world. Opening up the portal for demons to come into your life to influence you. Before you know it, you're not even reading the Bible anymore. You're not praying anymore. 
back out into the world. Because you've opened the door for demons. You have not resisted the devil. He has not fleed from you. You have not drawn close to God. And yes, at the end of the day, you know, salvation is initiated by the, by the will of God. But it comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you need to hear these things in order for the God to sow, you know, to, to cultivate the seed that's been sown. And I pray that that does happen. And like I say, so if you want to talk, drop a comment in the question box below. And, uh, you know, seek truth and seek repentance and cut these things out of the life and pray, 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 pray hard. Pray hard and ask God, you know, to pour his Holy Spirit out in your life, to protect you with the blood of his son, to drive any demonic forces or any demonic attacks from your life and to keep you in his Holy Spirit and to keep you on the straight and narrow. And he will answer you. He will give you an answer. Jesus said, if you've been wicked now to give your sons and your daughters good gifts, how much more will God give you if you ask of him? The Holy Spirit. Until next time, brothers and sisters, always, always stay in the word and stay prayerful and be your brother's keeper. I love you guys. Shalom.